common question during the design of products with moving parts are, what will my product look like during normal operation and are there any clearance violations when parts move? Siemens NX Animation Designer is a motion simulation application for analyzing kinematic behavior when the effects of forces are not yet needed. Let's start defining the motion of our assembly by first creating rigid groups to indicate what can move. We can select components directly or by rectangle select. Watch as we freely choose components without having to adhere to any assembly structure rules giving us total flexibility in moving whatever we want. We can also choose complete sub-assemblies using the assembly navigator. This subtle yet important detail here is that you can move any component regardless of where it lives in the assembly structure. Notice how we'll move the small slider supports that are buried deep in some sub-assembly. To verify you have the right components in the right rigid group, let's change our display to show each of the rigid group in its own color. With this capability, you can instantly see what groups of components can move. Now that we have the rigid groups defined, let's define how they move relative to each other. Animation Designer includes the most common joints for fixing, sliding, rotating, and even moving components along curves. We'll fix the base and add a slider joint to allow the transport frame to move back and forth and side to side. The last joint will move the gripper up and down. Let's get a glimpse of how our motion definition is progressing. Just select a rigid group, move it around, and the model updates accordingly. There is no need to solve the model or wait for any position calculations to happen. That looks perfect. Now we're ready to add some motors and set the exact sequence of operations. The first motor will move the transport frame back and forth, the second will move it from side to side, and the last will move the gripper up and down. Each motor can have multiple events for adding dwell or return steps, and we'll see a simple way to create more events. These position motors are for intermittent motion, but we also have motors to provide continuous movement. We use a timeline control that provides video editing-like interaction. A quick mirror operation creates the return actuation of each motor. Now it's just a matter of defining when each event should occur. The goal here is to have the transport frame move to the right, then it needs to move out. Finally, the gripper needs to extend down to the conveyor so it can pick up a part. The last step is for the gripper to return so the part can be moved to the next operation. Motion in Animation Designer is time-based, so it's a simple drag of the time bars to specify the desired sequence. Watch as we drag the time bars around. Some useful tools are snapping to guarantee continuous operation. You can move an event, you can drag the start or end to alter the duration, you can mirror, and you can split an event to add a dwell. In just a few minutes, we were able to completely define the motion behavior for this machine. Animation Designer is perfect for designers who need to visualize products in motion and find collision between moving parts. Now that we have defined the correct sequence of operations, let's answer the question if there are any interferences between moving parts. Animation Designer includes interference checking that can show interfering parts during a motion study. Options are provided to stop an animation when a collision is first detected, and modes are available for fast or accurate checking. We'll get a better view by zooming in and using the timeline to determine when the collision occurs. So we can monitor the clearance during the entire range of motion, let's add a measurement between the phases of the slider and support. Once done, we can plot this measurement on a graph and look for any trends, maximum, or minimum values. A handy probe tool within the graph dialog lets us dial in on the point of interference. We'll pan the timeline just past the initial point of interference so we can use both parts as a guide when we model away the problem area. Now it's just a matter of setting the support as the work part and using modeling tools to address the issue. We could address this fix in many ways, such as specifying a precise clearance between the slider and support, or make the support the exact length as the others. Let's keep things simple and just move the face out of the way to some arbitrary distance. We can rerun our animation keeping collision on and notice there is no more interference. But what about the clearance? Just turn the graph on and notice the distance between the faces is plotted. In just minutes using Animation Designer, we were able to find and fix a collision that ensures our design is ready for production.